and welcome to the first physics lecture of the year. In this lecture, we will start looking at an introduction to physics, the basics. A disclaimer for this lecture is that everything we're going to cover over the next couple days, you should have learned previously in a math or science class. If you have not learned these things, or if you're having trouble with them, you need to come see me for extra help. We are going to blast right through this stuff really quickly, and if you, can't, if you don't keep up, you're going to be lost. So, everything we're going to talk about this year can be found on the webpage. This is the Introduction to Physics page, and this is your guide for the next three lectures. So not only should you be watching these video lectures, you need to read this page and print it out and put it in your notes so you have it as a reference. So to begin, what is physics? Well, physics is the study of the physical universe. So we are studying the universe. And this can be studying things from atoms and particles within atoms, or it can be studying galaxies. In physics, we study how these objects behave when they're at rest and when they're in motion. And it's the basis for almost every other science. There are several different areas of physics, and we're going to look at most of these this year. There's the study of mechanics, which is the study of objects at rest and in motion. Fluids, which is the study of how fluid substances like liquids and gases behave. Thermodynamics, which is the study of heat and heat transfer. Waves, the study of wave motion and sound, and light goes into this a little bit as well. Optics, which is the study of light. Electricity and magnetism, which is the study of each of these and how they interact, because they do interact, it turns out. And modern physics, which is anything from special relativity to quantum mechanics and nuclear physics. Think Einstein. So, what do these regions of the world have in common? If you look at this map, there are four or five little spots on this map that are gray and not green, and they all have something in common. It turns out these are the only countries in the whole world that do not use the metric system, and we are included in that. So if you look, the United States is gray, and it's because we measure things in feet and in pounds instead of meters and newtons. So what the heck is a meter and a newton? Well, a meter and a newton, or a pound and a foot, is something called a unit. And a unit is something that tells us what we are measuring. So if you give me a measurement and you just say, oh, it was 10 and a half. Well, 10 and a half what? 10 and a half miles, 10 and a half puppies. What are you talking about? I need a unit to describe what that number means. The metric system is a system of units. It's called the international system or the SI system, and it is the standard for all sciences. It wouldn't really make sense if a scientists over here were measuring thing in, things in feet and pounds, and then over in Europe they were measuring things in meters and newtons, because then we couldn't compare. They wouldn't be compatible, unless you converted them. So in this class, we are going to use the metric system, or the SI system. That means our standard unit of length is the meter. It's not feet or yards or miles, it's the meter. Our standard for mass is the kilogram. It turns out pounds is not even a measurement of mass, it's a measurement of weight, which is a different thing. So in this class, when I ask you for the mass of something, it's, you need to give it to me in the unit of kilograms. And the standard unit for time is the second. This is pretty consistent everywhere. We don't really have other measurements for time. It's pretty much just the second, minute, hour measurement, um, but we measure things in seconds. There are other standard units for different things, and we will get to those as they come up throughout the year. So now that we have a system of units, we need a little bit more. We need descriptors of those units, and those descriptors are called prefixes, and the prefix is something that comes before a unit, pre means before, and it indicates the magnitude. So for example, the SI unit of distance is the meter. 
But if we have a thousand meters, we can also write that as one kilometer or kilometer. A thousand meters and one kilometer are exactly the same measurement. If you were to take a measuring tape and measure a thousand meters and then measure one kilometer, they will be exactly the same. In this case, the word kilo tells us that there are a thousand meters. That's what kilo means. It means a thousand. So whenever you read one kilometer, it means one thousand meters. It's the same with all of these other prefixes. You will need to know most of the guys in this chart, especially the common ones, giga, mega, kilo, centi, milli, micro, and nano. We're going to use these throughout the year, and you need to know off the top of your head what these mean. So make sure you study this chart and you become familiar with it over the next couple weeks. So let's get a little bit of practice. As an example, how many centimeters are in 2.5 meters? Well, whenever you're given a problem, you need to start with what you know. So we know 2.5 meters, and meters is abbreviated with a little m. And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the number of centimeters, or little cm, that are in 2.5 meters. So do we know what the prefix centi means yet? Well, what we have to do is look at our chart. So centi is right here, and it's 10 to the minus 2. What that means is there are 100 centimeters in every meter. And you can see this when you look at a meter stick. If you have a meter stick handy, which you probably don't, but if you have one handy, look at it. There are 100 centimeter marks in that meter stick. So what we need to do is use a conversion factor. The units we want to cancel are meters, so meters have to go on the bottom. And the units that we want in the end are centimeters, so centimeters go on top. And we know from looking at our chart that centi means 100. There are 100 centimeters for every one meter. So if we double check our units here, meters cancel, we're left with centimeters, and that's what we want. So our answer is 2.5 times 100. We can ignore the one there because when you divide anything by one, it's exactly the same. So when you put this, hopefully you don't need to use a calculator here, but when you put something like this into your calculator, 2.5 times 100, there are 250 centimeters in every one meter. And that's how you use conversions and conversion factors. In the beginning, you will probably need to set your problem up like this with a conversion factor. But after a while, it'll become second nature, especially with the really simple ones like centimeters and kilometers. You won't need to set this whole problem up. But for now, I want you to do it this way. Do it out. So your homework for this lesson is to print this lesson from the web page. So remember that page right here, Introduction to Physics or What is Physics and Why Do I Care? You need to print this page out and put it in your notes. After you've done that, answer these following questions. What is the SI or metric unit for measuring length, mass, and volume? What is a prefix and why do we need them? And how many grams are in 0.27 kilograms? You need to write these down on a piece of paper with your name on it and be ready to turn them in the next time that I see you.